The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning to you here at 5 a.m. and thanks for waking up with us. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. A few schools are staying closed due to the winter weather that we saw overnight. The Tehachapi Unified School District will be closed today due to the flurries we saw. Meantime, El Tejon Unified and Peak to Peak Mountain Charter are on two hour delays due to snow and ice. All other schools across the county are on normal schedule as of now. And if you're heading out this morning, all of our major roads are open, although there's some areas still very wet from last night's storm. That includes Highway 58 and Interstate 5 over the Great Line. To make news around the state this morning, six people are dead, including a teen mom and her six month old baby in Tulare County. It happened yesterday in Goshen near Visalia. Now authorities are looking for at least two shooters. Esteban Reynoso with our sister station Casey in Fresno has more. I don't even think anybody's going to sleep good tonight here. And I'm pretty sure that the whole community of Goshen is, is, is um, they're shooken up. Patty Guzman drove as fast as she could to Goshen to try and find out if her friend was one of the victims in this deadly shooting that claimed the lives of six people. Another neighbor told us two of the victims, a new and growing family, a 17 year old mother was being chased from the home with her six month old baby in her arms when both of them were shot and killed. Guzman was relieved to find out it wasn't her friend, but is still trying to wrap her head around why someone would shoot and kill a family in this neighborhood. Who goes into a house and massacres a bunch of people? Yeah. Who does that? We definitely have suspects who came in onto the property and uh, made it very personal. Tulare County Sheriff Mike Boudreaux believes this shooting is gang related. The sheriff says there are at least two suspected shooters that entered the home and fired multiple rounds. Neighbors tell us they heard up to 20 gunshots in the middle of the night. We believe that there are gang associations uh, involved in this scene as well as potential narcotics investigations. Sheriff Boudreaux says just last week, the same address where this shooting happened, deputies executed a narcotics search warrant. And before Monday's shooting, there were reports reports of a drive-by shooting at the same address. And this shooting, Boudreaux says, has affected his deputies too. When you have a 17-year-old and a six-month-old child, um, it elevates your sense of, of compassion. After this, who, who's going to feel safe? All eastbound lanes of the Westside Parkway are open this morning, but they could close tonight for construction work. The closure takes place between Mohawk Street and Truxton Avenue. It'll happen through Wednesday. The closures will take place between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. for the installation of an overhead sign. The California Highway Patrol will be monitoring the construction zone, helping detour traffic at the Mohawk exit. So you can just go right on to Truxton there. Those schedules, though, may change without, not new without notice due to unforeseen circumstances like the weather. I think that's probably, although we don't have official words, probably what happened last night because of all the rain that we saw yesterday. So just keep in mind, if you're going to be heading out on the Westside Parkway going into Central Bakersfield downtown area over the next several nights, you could run into this traffic detour. Making news around the nation, growing fallout regarding the classified documents found at President Biden's private office and his home in Delaware. A special counsel is investigating the matter and Republicans are among those raising national security concerns. NBC Bree, Bree Jackson is in Washington. President Biden once again ignoring questions from reporters regarding his handling of classified material. How do you think that the classified documents got into your boxes? Despite the silence, Republicans are demanding answers. Are there more documents? Is there yeah. an inventory of what the Bidens have that's still missing? We have no answers to many questions. Close to a dozen documents were found at Mr. Biden's private office in Washington, D.C., including at least one document marked top secret. There were also two batches discovered at his Delaware home, causing Republicans to send a letter to the White House requesting visitor logs citing serious national 
national security implications. The White House and the U.S. Secret Service both saying they do not maintain those records because it's a private residence. This is so wrong. This is another example of a two-tier system of justice in America, and this is one reason why Republicans are so outraged over this whole process and the hypocrisy of the Biden administration. The GOP is vowing to investigate the matter. We're getting a lot of whistleblowers, by the way. A special counsel is now reviewing the storage of records discovered at both locations. President Biden's supporters are standing firm. I think the president and his administration are cooperating, and, and I trust that they will continue to cooperate. The president's personal attorney insisting they cannot release certain details relevant to the investigation while it is ongoing. And the White House is blasting Republicans, claiming they are politicizing the issue while saying that President Biden takes the handling of classified documents seriously. In Washington, I'm Bree Jackson for NBC News. 514 is your time now and happening tomorrow right outside our studios. The return of a sweet fundraiser benefiting the Alzheimer's Disease Association of Kern County. Once again, we are teaming up with the uh, ADA KC and Hodel's for our annual Cinnamon World fundraiser. The drive benefits ADA KC and local families living with the devastating disease by keeping this crucial resource open and thriving. So it all starts at 6 a.m. tomorrow and it will continue until we sell out. We will sell out, by the way. $20 gets you a pan of hot, gooey cinnamon rolls from Hodel's. And if you'd like to place an order ahead of time just to make sure that you can get a pan, you can text ADAKC to 366-283. So again, this starts at 6 a.m. tomorrow. New this morning, we're learning President Biden will travel to Central California Thursday to visit areas devastated by recent storms. A statement from the White House says the president will visit with first responders and state and local officials. He will also survey recovery efforts and determine how much additional federal support is needed. Lexington Reservoir in Santa Clara County it's more than 100% full for the first time in nearly four years. And of course, the upside to all of this recent weather, drought conditions in California have significantly improved in just a matter of weeks. But as 17's Aton Wallace explains, the state's water woes have not been washed away. Well, as it pertains to the drought, the storms no doubt are welcome news for California, but experts emphasize they only mean so much without long-term consistency. All of the new rain and importantly, all of the fresh snow have made a huge difference in California's drought situation since the start of the new year. A look at the most recent drought monitor update on the right side of the screen dated January 10th shows all of the state is now out of the exceptional drought category and most of the state is out of the extreme drought category. Still, as indicated by the orange, much of the state remains in severe drought. Short term is very important, yes, but long term is very important as well. That's the message weather specialist, researcher, and meteorologist Jason Farhang says California should take away from the recent storms. We definitely got to have consistency for the next several winters of a storm track focused on California and the western U.S. If we do not see that, then everything that we've seen is this going to be a temporary fix only? A fix that so far is looking good for the state. The total Sierra snowpack for this time of year is at more than 200% of average, while key reservoirs, including Oroville, Kachuma, and Millerton, are above 100% for this time of year. Most of those are probably in a better position than they were before Christmas. If similar patterns continue, this is a great start to eradicating our drought. Still, the Department of Water Resources, or DWR, makes clear its message to Californians on conservation has not changed. DWR believes in this idea of making conservation a way of life because we don't know when the next dry conditions are going to come. We don't know when the next drought is going to happen. So we're always encouraging to uh, Californians to be smart with their water usage. And so that doesn't really change uh, depending on how many storms we see. That's just good practice going forward in California. And good news on river flows. DWR says the majority of rivers across the state have receded below dangerous levels. Still, they urge Californians to always be on alert, especially with more winter weather on the way. Reporting from Sacramento over the American River, Aton Wallace, 17 News. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.